Mansfield, a fascinating and historic market town in Nottinghamshire in the UK. With gorgeous architecture and a remarkable history, there really is plenty to do and see here. One of the people that called this place home was 18-year-old Liam Gray. Liam had been born into a loving family and was one of four children, having three siblings, Paige, Madison and Freddie. Liam was popular and well-loved by those who knew him, with his mother Joanne describing him as happy-go-lucky. He loved to make people laugh and have fun, never taking himself too seriously. He was a passionate supporter of his beloved Liverpool Football Club, and one of his former teachers said he had a heart of gold and always looked out for and cared for other people. He was also close to his grandfather John, affectionately known as Pops, and Liam would move in with him when he was in his teens, after having a tough time at school. He had a close group of friends and an especially close bond with Reese, his best friend. The pair were as close as brothers and spent most of their time together, with Madison calling them inseparable. They had grown up together and gone to the same schools, and their friendship had gone from strength to strength. Reese lived across the road from Liam and Pops, and Reese was equally close to Pops, saying he would be lost without him. Liam and his grandfather lived on Gladstone Street, and after moving, Liam introduced Reese to one of his other friends, Jonathan Treadgold. 17-year-old Jonathan's early life had been troubled, and he had spent various times in the care of social services, following drug use and domestic violence in the family home. He was also having run-ins with the law from the age of 14, with a criminal record including threatening behaviour and criminal damage. Liam, being the caring young man he was, decided to take Jonathan under his wing and try and be there for him as a friend and a support system. He recognised that Jonathan had various struggles and wanted to help him turn his life around. Joanne wasn't too sure though. She said there was just something about Jonathan that bothered her and she wasn't keen on her son hanging around with him. Liam's sister had also heard things about Jonathan and his behaviour, but she was prepared to put that aside, give him a chance, and judge for herself what he was like. Liam invited Jonathan to hang out with him, on one occasion asking him if he wanted to go to a family party at Joanne's house. Jonathan had far too much to drink, and became more and more angry and volatile, culminating in him assaulting someone. Liam was still determined to be there for Jonathan and showcase the same deep loyalty that he showed to all his friends. When he was 17, Liam got news that changed everything. His partner was expecting a baby. Liam was elated, excited to become a father and throw himself into the challenges and joys of parenthood that awaited him. Rhee said that Liam was over the moon. With impending fatherhood, Liam continued to mature, and knowing that it was going to be a monumental change in his life, he began to see his friends less as he prepared to meet his new baby. On the 18th of July 2019, Liam and his partner of three years welcomed their first child, a baby girl. Life was good and Liam was happy. The 1st of August, 2019. It was a bright and beautiful summer's day in Mansfield. On the 2nd of August, Liam and his partner were moving to Birmingham with their baby to start their next chapter as a family. Whilst his family were going to miss him and were sad he was moving away, they supported him and he was ready to take the leap. He decided to spend his last day in Mansfield with his two closest friends. Liam, Jonathan and Reese were seen going into a local shop to purchase alcohol before going back to Pops' house on Gladstone Street. They sat in the garden and drank and filmed a series of Snapchat videos whilst there. Liam asked Jonathan if he was going to change out of his tracksuit bottoms to make himself look a bit smarter, as he wasn't yet 18, and he didn't want him to draw attention to himself. Liam said he could wear a pair of his jeans if he wanted to, and after Jonathan got changed, the three of them headed off to a nearby pub. At 
As they were walking through the park, Reese received a message. It was from Jonathan's sister's boyfriend, the contents of which are not clear, but it sparked an argument. Reese showed the message to the other two, and Liam claimed he would hit the male who had sent the message in an attempt to stick up for Jonathan's sister. Jonathan grew incredibly angry, and the argument continued to escalate. As the situation got worse, Liam told him if he was going to keep behaving like that, he needed to go away and leave the jeans back at the house. After Jonathan had gone, Liam wanted to try and de-escalate the situation and not have his last day ruined. So they agreed to go back to the house to get Jonathan and try and salvage the rest of the day. When Jonathan arrived at the house, Pops was there in the living room. Liam and Reese got back just four minutes later and Liam was keen to try and resolve the argument. Reese waited outside. Roughly a minute later, Jonathan came running out of the house, telling Reese, I've stabbed him. I've f***ing killed him. Jonathan then ran away. Reese immediately went inside, unsure as to whether or not it was all just hot air, or if he had actually hurt Liam. When Reese went inside, he found Liam in the dining room. He was bleeding profusely from his chest and holding tea towels there to try and stop it, before asking for the emergency services. Reese called 999 and then gave the phone to Pops for him to talk to the operator. Ambulance, is the patient breathing? He's been stabbed in the chest. Okay, is he breathing? Just about, I think, yes. Okay, is he awake? He is, but he's still just about awake. Are you? Liam. Okay, just tell me exactly Liam. what's happened. He just walked in the house and his lad jumped up and stabbed him. Okay, you're doing really, really well. Now, do you know who the person is who stabbed him? Yes, what? John Threadgold. John? Threadgold. Liam then fell to the floor, and Pops tried his best to help him and administer aid, putting pressure on the wound to try and stop the bleed. Is there anybody able to let the crew in? Yes, I sent somebody on the front. When the paramedics arrived on scene, Reese ran out to meet them. They tried to stabilise him as much as possible and treat his injuries. The police were also dispatched, and when they got there, they put Reese into the back of their car. The news soon made it to Joanne that Pops's house had the emergency services outside, and that Liam had been stabbed by Jonathan. Superintendent Kevin Broadhead would dispatch more officers as they needed to find Jonathan, and find him quickly. They would soon get some important information. The police received a call from the owner of a local sandwich shop, saying that Jonathan was climbing over the wall at the back of the shop. He told the owner that he had been involved in a serious incident and had acted in self-defence, lifting up his shirt and appearing to show injuries. The police immediately linked it to the stabbing of Liam and sent more officers over there to arrest Jonathan. The crew are with the patient now. Right, he's stopped breathing. He's unconscious and he's stopped breathing. At 3.15pm, Joanne and one of Liam's sisters arrived at the house on Gladstone Street. The crew were still there and still battling to save him. Liam? Has he, has he stopped breathing now? He's, he's breathing at the minute. They'd had to cut his chest open and manually keep his heart going. The paramedics decided against taking him to hospital in the air ambulance, as this would have meant they could not work on him whilst in the air. So the decision was made to transport him to the hospital by road. Liam was then put into the back of the ambulance and Joanne was taken to see him by an officer. She told him that she loved him as her beloved son fought for his life. He was then rushed to Queen's Medical Centre in Nottingham. The police were still hunting for Jonathan Treadgold, who had run away from the sandwich shop. But then, another call came in. The person said he was at a house in Mansfield where his mother was visiting a friend. He had told his mother and her friend that he had stabbed Liam and that Liam was dead. The arrest was caught on the police's body cam footage at 3.33pm. He told the officers that Liam had been the one to instigate it and had tried to stab him and that he had acted in self-defence. He was arrested on suspicion of causing grievous bodily harm. Several hours after his arrest, he was breathalysed, and even after the time that had passed, 
His blood alcohol level was still three times the legal drink drive limit, so he had clearly consumed a significant amount of alcohol. After getting to the hospital, Liam was taken straight into open heart surgery to try and save him. Despite the best efforts of the medical staff, and after an hour and a half of trying to keep him alive, Liam succumbed to his injuries and died. Liam's sister Paige would later say, I just remember a doctor walking in with two nurses, and I knew then from the look on the doctor's face that Liam had passed. She ran out of the room and had a panic attack. Joanne said she knew in that moment too that he had gone, and that her heart shattered. She tried to call her other daughter Madison, who initially didn't answer. When she answered the second call, she said it felt like a piece of her was now gone too. Madison collapsed, unable to process what was happening. Those in the community could not believe it and were in total shock, and many people shared tributes to him, talking about how he had impacted their lives and just how much he was going to be missed. Joanne thanked the local community for all of their support and love, saying, Liam was just 18 years old, and just two weeks into being a father himself. It is with sadness and devastation that he has lost his life to such a horrific crime. A post-mortem revealed that Liam had no defensive wounds, and the pathologist determined that it had been a jabbing motion when he had been stabbed. The knife had pierced his heart. Despite initially being arrested on suspicion of grievous bodily harm, this was now a murder inquiry. The police began to go through the CCTV footage to piece together the events of that day and try and work out how this had all come to be. They watched the footage of them going into the shop and buying the alcohol. Nothing seemed unusual and everything looked fine. They were then caught walking down the road before stopping in the park. The park was not covered by CCTV cameras. In his interviews, Jonathan said he had fled the park in a hurry after the argument had broken out in order to get away from Liam. But the footage showed him walking and not running. Liam and Reese were seen on CCTV walking back too. Jonathan was interviewed again, where he now said although he had picked the knife up, he had done so in self-defence, and that he had been waving it around to scare him off, and this was how Liam had been stabbed. But based on what Pops had seen when he witnessed the attack, and what was known about Jonathan's past, including a conviction six weeks prior for assaulting his girlfriend, his version of events just was not stacking up. The CCTV footage showed Jonathan running from Gladstone Street just one minute after Liam had gone into the house. When police searched the house, they found the knife in the kitchen, covered in Liam's blood and Jonathan's fingerprints. Jonathan also alleged in his interviews that Liam had bullied and picked on him for years and showed scars on his body, saying Liam had caused them, but the investigation would reveal the truth. The police investigating Liam's death trawled through the various records of social services and they determined that the healed scars on Jonathan's body had not been caused by Liam but were instead self-inflicted. There was nothing to substantiate his claims that Liam had bullied him or treated him badly. Superintendent Kevin Broadhead said he believed that Jonathan was jealous of Liam starting a new life with his family in Birmingham and beginning an exciting chapter when his own life was so chaotic. Based on all of the evidence they had gathered, Jonathan Treadgold was charged with murder. On the 18th of August, a fundraising event was held to generate funds to pay for a funeral for Liam, raise money for his newborn baby, and donate to a charity tackling knife crime. 
a GoFundMe was also set up. When his funeral was held, hundreds of mourners lined the streets as his coffin draped in a Liverpool football club flag was taken into St Peter and St Paul's Church. Those following the coffin wore shirts with a photograph of Liam on them, with Always Loved, Never Forgotten, Forever Missed written on them too. Liam's devastated grandfather, who had tried to save his life, paid tribute to him. Liam, I'm missing you terribly. I tried so much to help you, and I live that day every day. My best was not good enough, and I am so sorry. I hope you are happy with the angels. Love you forever. The reverend conducting the service told those in attendance, We need to go away not remembering the manner of Liam's death and the tragedy that it is, but remember the gift of life he was to each and every one of you here, and we go away with a message. Bin, the knife. We want young people to grow up safe, to not have their lives taken or destroyed. The funeral was a reflection of just how loved Liam was, and how much of an impact he had on those he knew. Because he was 17 when the stabbing took place, Jonathan Treadgold was tried as a child, something that greatly upset Joanne. On the 1st of November, he appeared in court and entered a plea of not guilty to the charge of murder. He was told his trial would begin the following year. Because of his not guilty plea, the defence requested a second post-mortem to be carried out on Liam's body. Joanne said it was disgraceful that he was putting Liam's family through yet more pain and devastation with his not guilty plea. Also due to his age, there was initially a ban on his name and identity being reported. The Mansfield Chad newspaper made an application for the restrictions to be lifted and the judge remarked, That is something I am mindful to do today. It seems to me to be entirely right that today's hearing should name the defendant. And with that, Jonathan Treadgold was unmasked and named in the press. Throughout the trial, Liam's family wore shirts with his face on it, showing that no matter how painful it was going to be, they were going to be there for him and his memory. During the proceedings, Jonathan was disrespectful and disruptive in court. He wouldn't take to the stand, he wouldn't speak, and he would not give any reason as to why he had stabbed Liam, someone who had been a good and loyal friend and really looked after him. Paige said that she could tell from the look on his face that he wasn't sorry for what he had done at all. The evidence put before the court painted a devastating picture. A young man, a new father, about to start a new chapter in his life, taken in a violent and disturbing attack. February 7th, 2020. The jury returned their verdict. Jonathan Treadgold was unanimously found guilty and showed no emotion as the verdict was given. All he said was, sound. Shouts of yes could be heard from the public gallery as Liam's family were elated that he had been convicted of his murder. Outside the courts, Joanne read a statement on behalf of the family. No family should experience this pain. Our lives have been irreparably shattered. No sentence could ever adequately reflect our loss. We will never see Liam again, hear his laugh, or see our phones flash with an incoming call from him. He was stolen from our lives. We'd like to thank everyone who tried to help and save Liam, and we appreciate everything they did. Monday, the 10th of February, 2020. At Nottingham Crown Court, Jonathan Treadgold was sentenced to a minimum of 16 years in prison for the murder of Liam Gray. Just as Gregory Dixon said, this was done in anger, drink and spite, not in fear. The judge added that he could serve longer than 16 years, as it would be for the parole board to determine whether or not he was safe to be released, and if they deemed that he wasn't, then he would stay in custody. Following his sentencing, Joanne said, I don't think it's long enough, but there's not much more to say. The murder of Liam Gray was a senseless, tragic and brutal one. Paige said she reminds his daughter of him every day, adding that she gets her personality from Liam. As she continues to grow up, surrounded by the love of her family, the legacy of her beloved father will continue to live on through her. The tragedy of this case is best summed up 
by the words of his mother Joanne. There are so many things that Liam never got to do. He hadn't learned to drive, been to college, got a stable job, got married, bought a house or had the chance to parent his daughter and watch her grow up. We, as a family, have been robbed of watching him do all that too. For those of you that like to listen on the go, we now have our episodes in podcast form and you can now find this via the link in our description box or by searching Truly Criminal Podcast on your podcasting platforms. Thank you.